The next part is, of course, edge pairing. It may be this one. Yeah, this one fits over here. So this is typical edge pairing. Turn, turn, turn. Now, what you want to be careful of is the way that I placed it. You want to make sure that we don't end up with parodies here because as a super cube, if you end up with parodies and you do the Red Bull algorithm, which I'll show you to get it out, what you're going to end up actually doing is you're going to end up messing up your centers. What I usually like to do with these puzzles is I like to solve this kind first. So this and this will bind nicely together. So this will come over to here. And again, this is more just assembling more than solving, kind of like, like a jigsaw puzzle because it's really just placement with a very simple strategy, simple algorithm of moving things in and batting things out of the way. Find the other white, which is right over here. And of course, this is the part of the puzzle where you can kind of go on autopilot for a little bit. This comes here, this comes here, and Turn so that matches here. Move it out of the way, then substitute it with something else and move it in. And then we just keep going. Okay, so we're going to deal with these as the last two centers. Uh, now what has to happen is this will come here, this will come here. So we're going to get a swapping of these two. That algorithm is we move this to across to the side here. Then we do R F I U. R, I, F, and swing it back. So you can see this is in and this is in. Now we just have to swap these two, which means this is gonna come down here, this is gonna come up here. I have to swap this like this, and then do the same thing. Yep, yeah, okay. R, F, I, U, R, I, F and swing it on back. Okay. So this is fine and this has played into my evil plan. And here's what I mean by that. This is actually parity. This belongs here and this belongs here. Now if I do the parity algorithm to switch it, watch what's going to happen to this center over here. And that's going to be the red bull algorithm. Um, we're going to do R moves and we're going to do L moves and that's going to be moving from the middle. You could move both of them or you could just move one. We're just going to move the center. That's what I mean by just the one. Now notice we have another one with parity here and that's going to be very useful to us very quickly for very good reason that you're going to see. So red bull to R to B to U and L, Red Bull. Then to U, R I, to U, R, to U, to F, R, to F, L I, to B, are. So, oh joy, we fixed this parity. Uh-oh, look what we did over here. We actually transposed these two. But this is where the second parity comes in handy, because now, when I fix this parity and line it up the same way, I'm going to rotate this back. So that was the reasoning behind that. So let's see if it works. Are, and thus is the power of strategy. This is back and this is okay here too. But in any case, we've just reduced this to this at this point. So it's really just a matter of going through the motions and finishing the, the solve with that. So we can start off with a green side here and just start putting things in. I don't even have to worry about coordinating the centers. I know that they're, they're coordinated. Um, but this is gonna be the blue side and the other blue side is here. The other one is this uh, this green one over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to match them up. Matches up here. Turn this in. 
and turn this in. So that's looking real nice over here. Now we're going to turn this into a hexagonal die pyramid. We're going to carve that shape out. So let's put this in with the proper side here, turn it in, and we're good over here. I think it'll be more helpful if I turn it like this, and then turn it down. And I'm just going to keep fiddling about until it makes sense. This makes more sense over here. Double turn this up and turn this back. So far, so good. Now where's another one with green? It's this one here. So we'll turn this in until I can get this to make sense, which eventually it will. Not like that. Here's this little blue over here. Little light blue which correlates with this. Fits in nicely like a jigsaw puzzle. And there we go. So we've got our edges here. Now it's just a matter of corners. Now here's another thing about this particular puzzle that actually could, it's subtle, but it could be helpful in ways that we didn't get with the other hexagonal die pyramids. So now we want to put our corners in. So the corner that I'm looking for here is green, light blue, red, yellow, and green. So it might be in this mess here, which I think it is. I just have to move the dark green up to here. So turn, 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 and just keep rolling this until it's where we want it to be, where it'll make sense, turn and turn, so we're good, okay? Now we want to put this little blue corner in, but let me show you this first over here. You can see this red is in, or is it? Notice when you look at it, I don't know if you can see it too well, but it doesn't seem to fit. It actually looks like it's a triangular piece, which it is. It looks like it's symmetric, which it is. So because of that, we should get the impression that it can rotate any way along its, uh, along its axis and still appear to be snug. But because of the particular shape of this puzzle, there actually is one particular configuration that this goes in, which is the same of all these puzzles. Um, all these hexagonal dipyramidal puzzles. The difference is here I can tell when it's not oriented correctly or rotated correctly because you can see that the shape is wrong. So what's unique about this version of this is that I actually can tell if this is um, rotated correctly. In other words, I cannot falsely equivocate this piece based on its rotation. It has one specific rotation, but in this puzzle I can tell when I have that specific rotation, whereas the other ones I couldn't, which means I'm not going to end up with a parity at the end where just this is out and everything else seems to be in, because I can tell this one is out. If that were the case, I'd have to keep rotating this blindly until everything seemed to make sense. So I'm going to move this down. Turn, turn, and I'm just going to keep rotating it around until the shape makes sense. So how about this? And yeah, it might be hard to visualize, but you can see this fits a lot more snug. So that's exactly where it needs to be. All right, so small white one. Must be down here somewhere, right over here. So turn, turn. Do we like this? Um, no, I don't think so. So we'll keep turning it. So there's no mistaking the positioning of these little corners. This one looks better. Turn it up and we're good. So that's fine. Now the little blue one, little light blue one rather, over here. So in this puzzle, some things are harder than the others. Some things are easier. So there's trade-offs. Turn, turn, still not in to our liking. Turn, turn, that looks better, turn, so we're good, turn. Okay, so we have our actual corrected first layer here, and now we're just going to rotate our edges in, 3x3 three three style. So what goes, what, which one goes here? Well, in this case, it's going to be the purple one, which is here. This is going to rotate in where the green is over here, the yellow is over here. Turn, 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 turn. So this is like all the other HD puzzles that we've seen. So we're finishing our 
Oh, we finished our second layer. Now we just have the top. This is the payoff layer of all mods. This is the challenging part. So first step I'd like to do is I'd like to orient it properly. This is oriented properly. And now we take a look and see which edges are supposed to be where. Well, actually we have to see which is rotated correctly. We can see that this belongs here, but it's not rotated correctly. You can also tell because this pink is up when it should be down, this burgundy or brown is down when it should be up. So this is rotated wrong. This is rotated correctly because the, the brown is up, this brown is up, and this brown is down. So we've got these two up, these two down. That constitutes an L formation. So we move the L formation to the left, and then we do the algorithm F R U R I U I F I. I know that's going to give me a line formation, which is what it did. Both browns are up here, both browns are down here. So once again, F R U R I U I F I. Now everything should be rotated up, which you can tell they are. So now we just have to rotate things into position. Is anything in? Nope, it's all out. I don't have to worry about 4x4 four four or even number parodies. So R, U, R, I, U, R, 2, U, R, I. Anything in? Yeah, this one's in. So hold it like this. This is a revisit of how we dealt with the centers here. R, U, R, I, U, R, 2, U, R I once more should do it. R U R I U R two U R I and we're good. These are in. Okay, what about our corners? Not in, not in, not in, not in. Nothing is in. So let's go ahead and rotate these around until something's in. Forward, back, back. This is a rehash of what we saw with the last two centers, the corner portions of the center, so to speak, same thing. This is in, not in, not in, not in. So this is in, I'm gonna hold it in this angle here. Forward, forward, bang, bang, zoom, zoom, pow, kersplat. Okay, so now, you can see this is in, this is in, this is in, and this is in. It's just rotated wrong. Now, at first glance, it might look like, and let me get some of these other colors out of the way so you can maybe see it better. It looks like we have a parity where only this is out and everything is in. And that's what it would have looked like with everything else. But the true nature of this kind of parity comes out to show you it's not a parity, a parity at all. Because if you look closely, this purple one here, even though it's in, it's not rotated correctly. And in this version of the puzzle, you can tell that. If you couldn't tell that, then it would appear to be it's in and you have an impossible parity, but you can tell that it's out. So this is a perfect demonstration of the fallacy of false equivocation, where if this were totally symmetric and you can rotate it any way and it'll look the same, this shows that it's not all the same. And if we only had a way of marking it, uh, with a specific area that it's supposed to be in, then you could tell that, and this one actually does that. So this shows proof positive what we've been talking about, that not all rotations are the same despite the fact that it might be symmetric. I can tell this one is out, and this one is in, this one is in, and this one is out. So I've got these two that are out. So I know I just have to rotate this and rotate this. So now it's clear to me. Otherwise, I could rotate this, then... Oh, let's make sure we're, we've got the right level here. Yeah, okay. So this is right, this is wrong. So these two are incorrect. Now before, if I didn't know which one, I'd turn this in and then move here and just keep rotating it until everything was fine. This would stay out, but now this is out, but I wouldn't know that. I would have equivocated it. This can't be equivocated. So I'm going to go ahead and actually turn this in to show you what I mean. So we've got turn, 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 turn. And I'm just gonna do this until it's obviously where it needs to be. Okay, and now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bypass this one, because I know that that's in. 
Now normally what I would have done is I would have rotated that around until the whole thing is solved. Not knowing that this is really out and that's really out, but it doesn't matter because it will look solved. But I don't need to do that. I can go right to here and rotate it around until this looks like it's in. So turn, turn. So this is a fascinating demonstration, proof positive of the concepts that we've been talking about with this. Turn, turn. And I can tell this now looks in, and I can tell that everything was brought into position. And it is now solved. So first time solve of a five layer hexagonal dipyramid. The benefit of this was showing how to handle the um, last two centers of a five by five supercube, and also to demonstrate this last layer fallacy of false equivocation where um, you appear to have parity where just one is rotated out, but now you can actually visualize the fact that these, although they look like they should be symmetric, they're actually not, how these are not rotated any direction and equivalent to being solved. So there you have it. Very fun puzzle. Uh, really, really fun to use. Turns excellent, uh, as is indicative of Raphael's style and craftsmanship. So thanks for watching.